The term East Rand unrest was used excessively in the 80s and early 90s to describe virtually continuous conflict between the people of this vast area east of Johannesburg and the police and army. This week, the Truth Commission listened to a story from one of the East Rand townships, Tembisa. Tembisa lies north of Kempton Park. Community leader Tim Abena says it was established for people who had been removed from Alexandra, Irene, Fawoodburg and Kempton Park. Tembisa also became a home to many migrant workers who lived in the hostels. Number 176 Sidibeng is the first house which was built in Tembisa around 1962-1963. This is the first shop in Tembisa. It used to be called uh, Fervoot Days. The name changed uh, around 1977. This used to be a building where we were an administration uh, building. We used to pay rent here. These are the result of 1976 riots. The place was burned down to ashes. This hostel is called the Setoha Hostel. It was the first hostel in Tembisa. This hostel is called the, the stronghold of the, the ANC. Uh, most of the people who used to be IFP supporters were driven out of this uh, hostel and uh, they went to, to Bosimose Hostel. This hostel, on the other side of town, housed a gang called the Toasters. They were young IFP members who got out of hand. Their political and criminal activities included murder, rape, assault and robbery. The toasters left a trail of destruction behind them. Their signature, burnt houses, property and people. Whenever they would find a comrade, they would take you in their car and then they would kill you and then they would ban you. They took this child and put him inside hot oil and that's where the name originates from. The toasters terrorized the community. They had a predictable route from the hostel down the hill past a filling station where they entered ANC area. On the 1st of April 1992, one of their victims was Lafina Tlamini. Inkata and the toasters came from the other side. They were carrying guns to attack people here in the township. They started shooting people out there in the streets until they entered my home here. His friend Tommy, who was standing next to the window, was shot, but escaped death by hiding underneath a table. His mother, Lefina, entered the room, not knowing that an attacker was waiting by the window, and that his next shot would be fatal. I got off by the corner over there from the car that fetched me. When I was coming up this way, I saw about two or three dead bodies. As I came, I passed a hippo next to one of the corpses. When I arrived, I discovered that the house was already full of people. My mother was lying between the bedroom and the dining room. The leader of the toasters was called Easter. He was killed, but after the funeral, the community decided to strike back. I just heard that his body has been exhumed and burned, and I just, I was there. I went to go and watch, and I just told myself that at least they have revenged on our behalf. Then Aster's brother took over as leader of the gang. He is now one of the members who are in prison and may apply for amnesty. The period between the release of Nelson Mandela and the run-up to the 1994 election was a turbulent one. A lot of the political violence happened between supporters of the ANC and the IFP, with the police playing a sinister role. Much of the violence was launched from the hostels on the surrounding communities. Hostels like Buzi Muzi in Tembisa. The Vuzi Muzi hostel in Timbisa was not only a hideout for the notorious Toasters gang. It was built in the late 70s as a labour compound to serve the industries of Kempton Park and the East Rand. In the early 90s, it became much more. During a spree of violence, residents who were not Zulu and not Inkata members were driven out of the hostel. 
Victims of the terror came to tell the commission in Tembisa this week about a different type of forced removal. These people wanted to know, is it a male or a female that you're carrying, the child? But before she, they could see that it's a boy. They, they pulled this, this child by the foot and they hit the child against the wall and she cracked her skull. I found my brother. It was somewhere in the forest. There was no border around. I looked at him and he was dead. I tried to turn him to see. I could see that all his bones were broken. When all the ANC and Kosa residents had left the hostel, Vuzi Muzi turned its attention to the larger Tembisa community. More and more people started looking for their loved ones in mortuaries. I found him at the mortuary. He was burnt. I recognized him by his foot, which was burnt, but it wasn't fully burnt. What made me identify my husband was a piece of clothing under his arm which was broken in half. His right hand was actually amputated. His legs were broken in half. At seemingly endless mass funerals, Politicians were quick to lay the blame in front of a single door. IFP stands for, I'm for peace. <laughs> what a laugh. The people of Natal, who had been dying since 1983 when the UDF was created, had been painting up on the world walls in Tigrani and Peter Maritzburg. IFP equals in Qatar, fears progress. <laughs> but the answers are not that simple. At that time, South Africa was uneasily edging towards a negotiated settlement in the World Trade Center in Kempton Park. Only a few kilometers away, the Vuzimuzi hostel served as a springboard for vicious attacks on the community. It was not an isolated case. In the hostels across the East Rand, they originated what became simplistically known as black-on-black -black violence. Allegations of a third force, so often denied by the then government, turned out to be a fact. And because the hostels were often isolated from the communities, it was from here that this third force, aided by the South African police, could operate with impunity. One of the functions of the violence was to derail the negotiation process. The other, was to make a point to the international community. If you follow the politics of South Africa, it is said that a, a black man won't rule. And by people, black on black violence, uh, as they were calling it, when they clash, uh, one would assume that how are they going to rule themselves when they clash like this? But for those who got trampled underfoot, in what will be remembered as perhaps the most vicious and underhand face of political repression this country has seen, the past is a bewildering and inexplicable country.